Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of AOS Close-Ups. This week we're going to take a look at Korn's most faithful of servants, the Slaughter Priests. We'll take a look at their background, the rules, and the roles they have on the battletop. Slaughter priests are giant, bloodthirsty prophets of the blood god. They roar prayers over the incoherent chanting of Korn's legions, and he blesses these demagogues with the ability to boil blood within his foe's veins, causing an agonizing death no amount of armor is proof against. The slaughter priest's faith can be so compelling that the enemy will be enraptured with a thirst for gore, causing them to recklessly abandon prepared defenses and rush into certain death. Slaughter Priests are not your typical, frail, rogue charlatan that hides in the rear ranks, but in fact they are towering berserkers who throw themselves into the foe, armed with a ritual cleaver, the height equal to that of a man. His physical and spiritual faith are born from drinking the blood of worthy foes, which is mixed with warpstone dust and demonic gore, and each sip swells the muscles and bones of the priests, some even bursting through their fleshy prisons. Their limbs stretch and thicken until they loom over their flock, blessed with the strength of corn. Those, though, who make an unworthy offering to corn do not survive this transformation, and are either deformed into a monstrous spawn or choke and drown on the vile brew, which boils them from the inside out. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the rules. When we look at his stats, they're pretty impressive. He has medium armor, he has six wounds, that's one more than you typically have with a character that usually has five wounds. He has a six inch move, which means he's gonna stay on pace with a lot of the infantry in the Bloodbound book. And he has a bravery value of eight. Now this will be a little bit more situational since characters are solo units and they typically don't have to worry about bravery tests. However, when the bravery stat does come up in its situational uh, situations, he will have the, you'll have the confidence that he at least has a medium value. So, when we look at his melee weapon, he has a 2 inch range, which means he can fight on the other side of a friendly unit and still attack, or he can attack maybe other characters that are on the other side of, a friend, of an enemy unit. So that's going to be pretty helpful when it does come up. Unfortunately, he only has 3 attacks that hit 50-50, but do wound on a 3 up. Surprisingly, there is no rend considering the size of that axe. I was really surprised, especially when you think about how the Blood Reavers have a uh, massive axe also, and they do get a rend. I guess they just sharpen theirs, while his is pre uh, pretty much just a ritual axe. Uh, but to make up for that, he does do 2 damage, so he does have the potential to do 6 damage in a turn, which is enough to kill off most characters that are infantry characters, of course, but they will need to fill those armor saves to pull that off. But, you know, the blood, or blood the, I'm sorry, the Slaughter Priest is not your beat stick. He is a support character. His strength does lie in his abilities. He can go into a combat that's supported by other units and lend a helping hand to turn that combat around. But he's not going to be able to run into an uh, enemy unit and probably wipe them out. So when we do look at his strengths, which are his abilities, we'll start off with Scorn of Sorcery. Scorn of Sorcery allows him to unbind spells just like a wizard. When we look at the uh, rules for wizards, it does state there that the number of spells a wizard can attempt to cast or unbind each turn is detailed on its war scroll. And on the war scroll, there's nothing detailed, so we have to assume that he can just uh, try to unbind each spell that he's able to unbind, which means he can unbind as many spells as your opponent tries to cast. So if they bring the gash and he's casting four to five spells that he can cast, this Slaughter Priest can do his best to try to stop that. Um, so it's a pretty helpful ability, especially considering that the Bloodbound don't really have wiz uh, wizards when you're running something maybe a little bit fluffy. Um, so he does work as a good stand-in against the other people who will bring wizards against you. So the other thing that the Slaughter Priest brings to the table is the Blood-Fueled Prayers. He has both Blood Boil and Blood Bind. In order to get these prayers off, you just roll a dice. On a 4-better, you can pick which one you're going to use. You can add one if you happen to kill a model in the previous turn. Otherwise, when you roll, if you roll a one, you take D3 mortal wounds, which is a pretty big price uh, to, to take if you're trying to cast these spells. So you probably don't want to just willy-nilly throw these around. You probably just want to judge when is the best time to try to pray to the bloodthirsty god. 
So the first one is pure offense. It does D6 mortal wounds to the enemy you target as long as they are within 16 inches. And the other one, which is really cool, is called Blood Bind. We're going to talk about this when we get to the tactic section just in a second here. You pick an enemy unit that's within 6 inches and not within 3 inches of an enemy unit or with any of your yeah an enemy unit and then all models in that unit must run as far as possible towards your nearest unit as if they were in the movement phase so this is a pretty nifty thing and we'll go over it now in the tactic section so let's take a look at how blood buying can be pretty effective on the tabletop here we have some Blood Reavers, they're approaching an Ophidian archway. Behind the Blood Reavers is a Slaughter Priest, and on the other side of the archway are some Chaos Pyre Legion Warriors armed with Halberds. Now this is going to present a problem for the Blood Reavers because the Pyre Legion does have a plus one to their armor save, giving them a three plus armor save, and it creates a narrow space so not a lot of Blood Reavers can get in there. However, with the use of Bloodbind, you're able to pull my Pyre Legion Warriors out, which is going to create an opportunity for the Blood Reavers to get more models in, as well as rob the Pyre Legion Warriors with their plus one bonus to the armor save. Now that just works because of the archway, but anytime a unit is behind maybe some walls or a castle or in a thin piece of terrain, this is always going to be helpful. Or even if they are in a forest, if they if you roll pretty high, or if they're all lined up on the edge of the forest, this might be just enough to get them out of the terrain piece and give them that plus one, or rob them of the plus one armor save. So just things I think you should consider when running this, just not to, it's not just to get the enemy to run closer to you, it's also to rob them of uh, cover bonuses. Overall, I think the strongest feature of the Slaughter Priest is definitely Scorn of Sorcery, allowing you to unbind any amount of spells is pretty powerful in itself but very helpful in armory on an army that when you run in a themed list uh, doesn't have any access to wizards so something i would truly um, encourage anybody who's thinking about running a bloodbound army no matter what the form uh, this is definitely the model you want to have in there as far as anti-magic defense is concerned when it comes to blood boil that ability i think you should use it sparingly definitely only in situations where you think you have an opportunity to kill a unit or monster off just to pile in those last couple of wounds that you need because you always have to uh, consider rolling that one and taking d3 uh, wounds yourself you don't want to uh, accidentally lose your slaughter priest or put him in a precarious position uh, if you don't need to the slaughter priest is definitely the best auxiliary piece in the bloodbound book he's a great looking model and he has a lot of dynamic uses on the board i think you're gonna have a lot of fun with him and that will conclude this episode of AOS Close-Ups. Please like and subscribe. Feel free to comment below about what unit you'd like to see next. And thank you for watching.